We have uh, right now we have uh, four research group at the institute, and this seismic interpretation course is run by this group, interpretation of geophysical data. So if you click it on here, then we have uh, go to research, and we have a lot of uh, topic here that might be your interest for your thesis or project. Basically, we interpreted all geophysical data like uh, seismic, electromagnetic, gravity. <coughs> all right. <laughs> seismic well tied. So, as you know, that uh, in the subsurface uh, data, we will have at least seismic and well right or seismics only if you have an if you work in the frontier area <coughs> and then if you work with only seismic then uh, what can what what kind of information that you could extract then it will be limited right so by using a wells then you can compare and extract uh, a lot of geological information out of your seismic data So this is the outline for today. Uh, in the first hour, uh, we will discuss a lot about uh, basic principle, basic principles of the well se seismic well tide, and maybe in the uh, the second hour uh, we will discuss about application of the seismic well tide. Why we need this kind of process when we interpreted the seismic data. And also we will have an exercise on Thursday. It's about a very basic exercise. You can use Excel or you can use calculator even. So it's a basic seismic weld exercise. Then uh, I w we want you to compare your this exercise with the project exercise later so on March. So here uh, on this exercise, you will use a manual manual uh, approach. Then on the project exercise, you will use uh, software, which is uh, Petrel. And also on the Petrel course, we will introduce you as well about the seismic well tie on Petrel. <laughs> so, yeah. Is that uh, there is not uh, not about um, I mean the calculation part in this uh, seismic well type process that is not so much so you don't have to worry about <laughs> formula or calculation etc so it's, it's, it's quite easy but then there is some limitation that we can't do in the manual exercise that will be covered by Petrel so the objective of well seismic tie anyone has working with seismic well type before? Oh, you? <laughs> you? Okay. How many people? You? One, two? We're a really little bit. Sorry? I've been working with like really, 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 really glass. Okay. A few, just a few wells. Okay. That's okay. So <laughs> then, <clears throat> what's the objective of well seismic type? Uh, remember that. Uh, we have seismic data, which is in the time domain, and then we have a uh, wells data, which is in the depth domain. So, in order to, to match between those uh, different domain, then we need to do this well seismic time. That's the that's the that's the simple, that's a short short uh, sentence about this objective. But then we have. Uh, a lot of uh, step that we need to follow. Yep. Yeah, as I mentioned before, uh, we have a two different domain of data, which is seismic data here and well data here. If you can imagine that uh, in the wells data, we we have very uh, we have very uh, scattered or, or if 
you see here <laughs> samples point along where bore so you you acquire your uh, sample every meters for instance but in the seismic uh, you acquire the data in the time domain and it's not, I mean it's quite uh, if you talk about vertical resolution then it will be higher than one meters so the, the, the important comparison between seismic and well is the sample points so in, in the wells maybe you have very high resolution every one meters but in the seismic it's very less resolution so with this seismic well type process we want to increase resolution of the seismic data because then by the end you will use a seismic data to extract a lot of geological information out of it all right it's a depth and time yeah. then um, this is a more practical comparison between seismic and well so what we have here we have well information in this case we have a geological markers or formation and also, of course all this information is in the depth domain right so for instance you have uh, this geological marker here uh, then you have uh, these deviated wells in the depth domain and then in the seismic we will have a uh, a lot of uh, reflector here but uh, we don't know what is this meaning I mean what is this related to the geological marker because then we need to put all this geological marker here into our seismic section to be able to interpret this geological marker as a seismic horizons okay And then again, we, we are dealing with a different domain, which is time here and depth in here. Why this seismic well type process is useful, or why borehole seismic is useful? If you see this resolution chart here, where we have a horizontal scale and a vertical scale there, this core probably you can have everything in core very very high resolution even a conventional core or sidewall core you have every one meter for instance and then you have a well locks here <coughs> still quite high resolution but it's less than core data then you have a seismic here if you if you talk about the vertical resolution of the seismic probably it could be cover uh, geological information uh, more than for instance if we have vertical resolution kind of uh, 20 meters you agree or 20 or 30 meters so it, it can be if it is more than 20 or 30 meters thick and it, co it can cover by seismic but it, if it is less than 20 or 30 meters then it's, it uh, couldn't cover by seismic data. So then, there is a gap between well and uh, seismic data. What we need to do is to have this uh, well seismic type process. So then, by looking at this and by doing this seismic well type process, then we can fill in the gap here. So we can use uh, our wells that are here which is more more dense then we can correlate to the seismic data remember in the seismic interpretation you are not draw the line right so <coughs> and also you need to you need to consider that seismic data is very very expensive data and it's difficult to acquire I've been uh, seismic data question in onshore in the swampy area for one month and it's it's very very difficult to get it so <coughs> first of all in the if you are in the onshore area 
you need to clear you need to clear clear the clear clear the line clear the clear the area when you want to put the line <coughs> and after that sometimes you will found snake or tiger even <laughs> coming in and then after that you drill the hole for your uh, for your um, uh, what do you call it air gun and then it's kind of 30 meters and sometimes sometimes it get stuck and after that you shoot the seismic for one line for instance boom 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 then you and then you have a processing data blah 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 it will take six months to you, to the interpreter desk but when you are sitting on the in front of your computer in front of your workstation you see very nice seismic section and you just draw the line like this and you are crossing the reflector then this is useless so you need to think that seismic interpretation is not only draw the horse the draw the line seismic interpretation is how you extract all geological information from your seismic data because if you just just draw the line here even mathematician can draw the line in front of the seismic line but you are here is to be uh, but you are here uh, learn how we export all geological information out of your seismic data that's the that's the conclusion of this course so now you are <laughs> you are ready <coughs> right and then back to the seismic well type this is just the intermezzo so because when I when when I work before <coughs> for and unfortunately I'm work as a development geologist before before I'm at, before I work as a geophysicist so I don't know what what well, I mean they just give me a seismic cube and just interpret it but I don't know what's the process behind it like acquisition and processing and all the stuff so then I just draw the line blah 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 and some some of my friends just crossing the reflector because when you say reflector here. When you say one reflector here, it means that you are working in the one geological time, right? One same geological time. So how if you draw something like this, <laughs> then it then or I mean this is not fault. This is the horizon. So if you draw something like this. You are crossing all the reflector. It means that you are crossing the geological timeline. <coughs> because uh, later, uh, from my previous experience teaching this course, when we have project exercise, we are working with Petrel. This, I mean, it's easy, man. I mean, you just there is in Petrel there is a there is a module called 3D auto tracking. You just hit one of reflector here. And then your 3D cube is finished. But then it's not that not, that's not the point. The point is that <coughs> you need to know where is the reflector that you want to interpret. It. Make sure your interpretation not crossing this reflector. <coughs> because then when when they when they get the petrol, they just say, wow, click 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 click, and <laughs> they just <laughs> ah, this is easy. <laughs> Yeah, but sometimes it can be a case, isn't it? Like when we have deep in reflectors. Huh? Yeah, but we talk, we are talking in the one geological timeline. Yeah, but sometimes like they can be deep in because yeah. of tectonics and like it can be one geological time still. Yeah, but then we we are not we are talking about the, not the chronostratigraphy, right? It, it it can be, for instance, it can be it can be uh, in first if you have something like that. But but what I'm talking about here. Is we are talking about the chrono chronostratigraphy. Okay. All right. Then back to seismic well tie. So in the seismic well tie, uh, in the well data, today we have uh, two measurement to measure the velocity of from the wells. So we have a check shot 
and we have a vertical seismic profiles. What's the difference between those of them? Then we that we, we will discuss uh, later and in the, uh, on this on this slide and later. So if you see here, this two is a check shot measurement, and this two is a vertical seismic profiles. <coughs> the sim, uh, this check shot this check shot is quite uh, old uh, measurement from from wells. So this VS practical seismic profile is quite a new technology. So what you have it here is model system with the seismic acquisition. So you have uh, this is a well, then you have uh, this geophone, then you have this uh, explosive here, and you, sh you just fire this uh, explosive, and then you and then uh, the wave is uh, penetrated to this old geological formation to the GIS geophone. Usually, it's uh, in one way uh, travel, one way travel time. This two is just to to see the difference between uh, vertical and deviated wells. So, how about in uh, VSP? Is this uh, is quite the same like here, if you see. Uh, but then, if you look at this, it is a lot of receiver, right, along this uh, borehole. So this is a vertical well and this is the deviated well. So in this case, <coughs> if you see here, then uh, the resolution is different between this VSP and the check shot. <coughs> if you see here, uh, in terms of resolution, then this VSP is more high resolution compared to the check shot. But then, uh, normally, they run uh, this PSP, not, uh, not the whole uh, well bore, but only in some part. But, what if, it, uh, but if it's a check shot, it can be run from top to the bottom of your wells. Here we see that uh, we have a different type of uh, VSP. Again, uh, we have dealing with uh, this is a vertical wells, this is vertical wells as well. But then we have a different measurement. We have this uh, deviated wells. We also have this uh, offset VSP. If we have uh, this source from here. Then yeah, etc. It's uh, but uh, normally it's us uh, for for C D E F is uh, quite uh, rare to have. It's just like a special case for the VSP measurement. All right, this is another important things. Wells reference datum. So when you drill the hole. Then you then you measure a lock. You will have uh, a reference for your measurement, right? It's the same with the uh, check shot as well. It's always have a reference where you start your measurement of your locks of your of or of your check shot. So in this case, <coughs> we will have. Uh, this is a deviated well. So, <coughs> these wells. Uh, in this case, uh, oh, this is onshore and this is the sea level. So, if you see here, if we drill the well from here, we will have uh, two reference. Either this KB or Kelly Bushing, or this RT or DF, rotary table of drilling for. Have you been to the rig of the wells? Okay, you're there. Uh, want to show you how this Kelly bushing or rotary tables looks like. Yeah. 
actually a rotary table, isn't it? This, this, yeah, this, is, this one is uh, the rotary table. But if you look at here, <coughs> on the top of it, here, this one, the calibration. So yeah, like this. This is the this is the drill floor drill floor or rotary table. <coughs> And the calibration on the picture, can you point it, please? Ah, this one. There is a nice picture li later on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Thank you. So, here, this is the rotary table or, or drill floor, and this is the calibration. Right? Like this. And why do we need to know it? I mean, uh, why do we need to know the, uh, the level of calibration? The level, yeah. Why? Yes, that's a good question. I mean, if you know the rotary table, how can we gonna use calibration? Yeah, <coughs> because uh, but remember that this rotary table and calibration is different, right? Mm -hmm. So then, uh, when you have, for instance, uh, your lock here, then this lock will start uh, from zero, right? And then, for instance, if you are in the Norway, we have. Uh, uh, rig here. If it is C level, then we have this kind of rig. Then, if you if you start from uh, lock from Kelly bushing of or or drill floor here, then you uh, when you measure the depth here, which is measure depth, you will measure also this level, which is we don't need this level, right? So if you ask what's the TVD or what's the TVD of uh, this uh, measurement, then we need to we need to uh, take it. I mean, not take it into account this Kelly bushing uh, level. So so then we are only dealing with the formation down here. <laughs> because if you if you take it for instance yeah if you we have a formation A here thousand meters but then this is a MD measure depth it's a measure along the well path but then you have a thirty meters of uh, Kelly bushing I mean uh, from a sea level to Kelly bushing it's thirty meters. If you put your 30 meters here, but then you send your drilling proposal to the driller, you will you will miss your formation 30 meters. Then the drillers will kill you. So that's why we need to be sure what is the what's the reference, and then what is the what's the, the depth that we are using. Because if you if you say that. Okay, we will find. We will. We will. When we drill the, the hole, we will meet this formation top of formation A at thousand uh, meters MD. But then, when when the drillers uh, drill the hole here, they 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 found this uh, top A is nineteen seven hundred meters. So there is a thirty meters shift. Yeah. When do you decide like uh, to use calibration as uh, your reference or your yeah. rotary table? When? It's, uh, it's already, that was the question. It's already stated on the lock header. So why don't they have maybe one common difference like if it's a rotary table or C level yeah. or calibration? Why why are you using three of them? Maybe this this. No, yeah, maybe because uh, because uh, this one, I think this one is all. Rotary table is older. I think in, in, the, in the past, it's, it's, it's uh, when we have the structure of the rig of the platform. Uh, this one is the rotary table or drill floor, is the, the old terminology. But some some companies still use it. But to be able to know what is the reference for this well, look at the seismic. Uh, look at the well header. Uh, I think I have the example here.
This is a this is a lock from Barrett's U Wells. So this is a this is a well header. Let me check if they put it here. Yeah, here. Look at this. This. So you have. Uh, in this case, they're using a drill floor instead of Kelly bushing. You see, this is drill floor, and the elevation is 24 meters above sea level. <coughs> but in some case, they're using Kelly bushing as well. So just check the the well header to be sure. So what is uh, maybe the standard difference between, I mean, height between calibushing and the drilling floor? It's, uh, it's, 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 it depends. It depends on the rig that you have. So, the, so there is no, there is no standard uh, number for drill floor or calibushing. It depends on the type of the rig as well. So then, so then uh, you know that uh, we have uh, this reference calibushing, drill four or three table, and then when when the wells, I mean when they measure the wells, we have a lot of uh, different measurement, right? We have uh, MD, uh, this is uh, measure depth. We have TVD through vertical depth, and etc. So <coughs> you need to be careful with this kind of uh, measurement. Normally, uh, this uh, geophysicist or geoscientist will use this uh, TVD sub C. So we don't care about this uh, elevation of the well trajectory, but we are caring about this uh, geological information here, the thickness of the geological information. So normally we use a uh, true vertical depth sub C. And then we have check shot datum. So if you remember this one, you see here elevation datum for time zero. So it's uh, when when uh, when they put the, this uh, explosive. So it's this elevation datum for time zero for the check shot. This, this one is also the same so we have uh, seismic measurement here and we have uh, lock or wells measurement here so in the well we have uh, this reference calibration rotary table or drill floor elevation then we will have uh, the well trajectory this is a uh, in this case we have uh, this deviated well and then when, when the, they measure it along this well path, they call it as a measure depth. But then when you are working on the seismic, uh, then, we, and then you compare your data, uh, probably you will use uh, the true vertical depth here. And then for the seismic, you will have this uh, another uh, unit to a travel time so both are both are different all right now uh, now we try to do this well seismic type process first of all we will use uh, two locks which is a uh, sonic and density if you <coughs> this is just a reminder that uh, on the sonic lock 
we will measure the slowness and the slowness means this one right but in uh, did you take the basic petrophysics course yeah okay so you know there is some correction from sonic right that you need to, to consider right right and then sonic clock editing and calibration this is the first step of the seismic well type process so we need to do the sonic clock editing and calibration why we need to do that like uh, yeah this is this is one the the, the example if you have some wash out for instance from your from your hole then we need to we need to edit the sonic clock otherwise uh, your next process will be uh, uncertain because then the, the this this uh, this reading this sonic clock reading might be wrong so you need to you, you need to edit and the, you need to edit your sonic clock <coughs> and after you edit the sonic clock then you need to calibrate the sonic clock because uh, remember that uh, sonic clock i mean the, the resolution between sonic clock and the check shot is different right in the check shot uh, in the sonic clock it's more uh, dense compared to your uh, check shot data so in here you see this is a check shot point just check shot measurement and then this is your sonic so by do, by doing this sonic clock calibration, you try to fit this sonic clock with the check shot measurement. But then you see this is a time, and then your sonic is. No, I mean I mean uh, what, what what the sonics measure? Slowness. It's slowness, yeah. So then you need to convert your slowness to time. For the sonic clock calibration itself, there is a lot of uh, methodology to do, to do the sonic clock calibration. But uh, you can try you can try uh, every methodology here. But uh, the 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 important thing from sonic clock calibration is that your sonic curve is matched with your check shot data. That's the point. So if you think that you don't need this uh, sophisticated uh, method, that's fine. As long as your sonic is matched with your check shot. What is the check shot? Sorry? Check shot. What is that? Uh, it's the check shot and all, or the VSP is the measurement from the wells to have uh, velocity or time on the wells. <coughs> check shot is the kind of measurement from the wells. So you so so in the sonic you measure the slowness, but in the check shot you measure the travel the, you measure the time. Uh, so in the seismic well type we need this check shot data. And then, what happened if you? Oh yeah, I need to remember. I need to remind you that in this calibration uh, for the exercise. Uh, we didn't do this sonic clock calibration. So we, uh, because in this exercise, we want you to to know, we want you to realize that what is this important things of this sonic clock calibration. Then you will do this sonic clock calibration on the project project exercise. And then I just want to give you an example. What what happened if we didn't do the calibration. This is uh, uh, time, uh, one-way travel time from the log data, which is from Sonic, and this is from a check shot. And this one is the same. This is from check shot, and this is from Sonic. So with the calibration, you will have quite a match between your check shot and your Sonic, but without calibration. You will have uh, this kind of difference, and this one will be affected to your acoustic impedance calculation, 
to your reflection coefficient calculation. Uh, just want to remind you about this polarity convention. I think Kamal already mentioned about it. But then uh, you need to be careful with this polarity convention because sometimes it's kind of uh, uh, misleading about it. So in here we have uh, uh, SCG or, or itself. We can say normal polarity or reverse polarity. And it's refer reference to American or Euro European, it's the same. So if you have, uh, oh, I think this one is normal. You ha if you have increased acoustic impedance with that, it's in the peak. So, if you, you have it? No. so if I have a, this is acoustic impedance. So if I have uh, two interface, if I have two, two, two formation and I have this interface, and and between these two is uh, increasing acoustic impedance, then my seismic trace is in the this peak. In this case, I'm using zero phase. But then if I have decrease in acoustic impedance, it will be in traffic. So it's do the other way around. <coughs> because uh, the, when we when you create the uh, later when you create the synthetic seismogram or the seismic trace, you will be dealing with this polarity convention. Phase convention is the same. You need to know uh, are you using zero phase or minimum phase. Wave flat. So we have a sonic flow calibration. Then we have a wave flat. This wave flat is quite uh, tricky because then you need to have uh, your seismic data itself to be able to create this wave flat. So, but this wave flat is quite important because if you see, this is a formula to create the synthetic seismogram or seismic trace, and Wave flat is here. So, on the exercise, we provide you a zero phase wave flat. So then you need, you don't need to, to to extract this wave flat here. But I just want to give you some uh, example of the wave flat estimation here. There is a lot of uh, methodology about it. Then you will learn uh, this wave flat extraction on the project exercise. So. To be, to be sure about this uh, wave flat extraction, we need to have a uh, software to extract. <coughs> so then, after we have a uh, sonic flow calibration, we have a wave flat. Then, the next step is to calculate this acoustic impedance. Right? And the formula of acoustic impedance is velocity and multiplied by density, right? And after you have an acoustic impedance, you calculate the reflection coefficient by this formula. And then you have a wave flat from your seismic. Then after that, you convolve your wave flat into your synthetic seismogram. So if I can conclude not conclude, I mean if I can make a list what is this seismic well tie step so you will have sonic clock editing or and Calibration Then you have uh, 
your wire plug extraction then you will have acoustic acoustic impedance then you need to do the reflection coefficient then after that you make uh, synthetic seismograph So this one is a, a workflow for the seismic well type process. Then I want to give you one example from uh, wells in Barency. So here we have this is a time and this is a depth in TVD sub C. Then we have this. Uh, Gamma ray and caliper. This caliper is a uh, lock to control your sonic lock. And you have a uh, sonic and density. This is, I'm doing this in petrol. Then you have, uh, you calculate this acoustic impedance here. Then you calculate this reflexive coefficient here. And after that, you extract the wire flag from the, your seismic cube. And after that, convolve this wire flag with reflexive coefficient. Then you have this uh, synthetic seismogram. This is synthetic from the wells. This is seismic, and this is seismic from the seismic 3D seismic cube. So by looking at this, then you can plot your formation depth. This is formation depth into your seismic. Then after this, you can start your seismic interpretation by interpreted this horizon right so imagine if you don't have the seismic well type you don't know what this reflection mean you don't know what this reflection means so by doing this we want to in the short uh, term we want to convert all the log measurement into time domain that's the that's the shortcut for the seismic well type we want to convert the ta the domain of the of the well into uh, time domain. So now here we have well, which is in here, and we have seismic together in the same domain. Then we can compare after this. <coughs> so uh, some. No, I think you can skip this. You can read this through. Yeah, this is uh, what I writing here. Summary of the products. So this is uh, what you need to do if you want to do the seismic well time process. Yeah, here. And this is the conclusion of the seismic basic seismic well time process. Uh, you see here, seismic data is in the time domain and its coarse resolution compared to borehole data. So in the in the so by by doing the seismic well time process, we also want to increase the resolution of our seismic data. <coughs> yeah. Is there any question? Or it's getting confused? You will, you will, uh, you will get more uh, understand when you do the exercise, I think, because uh, when you are doing the petrol course, uh, it's just easy. I mean, it's just click, 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 and it's done. <laughs> but then, with by doing this uh, basic exercise, you are doing it manually. So I think you will get better when you are doing the exercise. All right, how many?
minutes we take for the break? 15 minutes. 15? Yeah. Okay. So we'll meet at 12. Yes, 12. 1.15.